morning and welcome back. How are you today? Thank you for joining me. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a daily, re daily, me blah, blah, blah. why am I so tongue-tied and can't talk this morning? Daily message, daily message, daily message. <coughs> All right, so if you're here and you want to get a daily message from Spirit, let's try that, shall we? Alright, Spirit, for some reason Spirit's telling me to get a message out of these cards right here. <laughs> They're very flimsy. <laughs> Alright, Spirit, talk to me, baby. What do we need to know for our highest and greatest good to help us to move forward on our journey? Our journey of healing and towards our purpose in life towards the calling that you've placed on our lives. What do we need to do? All right. Self-discipline. Third chakra solar plexus. We need self-discipline. My self-discipline and willpower will significantly help me in my efforts to move forward and grow. I am free of the need for approval of others. I face each challenge with determination and courage. And I'm determined to live my life to its full potential. I am strong and capable. My actions speak louder than my words. All right. And what we don't see coming is acknowledge spirit, the sixth chakra, the third eye chakra. And we will trust in a higher power and acknowledge direct connection with it. In the stillness, I listen for the wisdom inside, and I am open to the spirituality that is within and all around me. I know that love is the creative force. I meditate and welcome mystical truths. I am open to seeking guidance in my spiritual quest from a spiritual teacher, master, or guru, or anybody that you feel is living the truth that you are embracing, that spirit is opening your eyes to embrace. Okie dokie. So, solar plexus and third eye is what we're dealing with. Self-discipline and acknowledging spirit. Spirit wants to help us to become more disciplined in our spiritual practices, which is kind of what we've been hearing for a while now, is that spirit wants to play with us, to spend time with us, and wants us to connect with one another and with our higher selves all right spirit what's the overall tarot energy in the collective today overall tarot energy what's working in the collective today spirit what how are you working in the collective what energy is working in our favor right now in the collective the moon the moon what is not working the moon is a shadowy card. What's not working is that we're halfway transforming, like we're not disciplined. The moon is about shadow work. It's about secrets. It's about complexity, not quite seeing the full picture. That's a cancer energy. Scorpio is showing up here for the, um, the, the transformation of death card. So, right now, we have some illusions about this transformation that we're not quite seeing. And I think that's why we need to be disciplined more and develop some sort of spiritual practices that will help us to overcome our lack of transformation in our lives. Alright, and how do we pull this together, Holy Spirit? What energy will pull this together? Justice. Seeing correctly the high priestess is in reverse so realizing that we're not using our intuition is what will pull us together realizing that we're not using our intuition we're not using our secret knowledge we're not using access to spirit that we have at our disposal to overcome and transform areas of our life that we've been struggling with and i was just watching a video on astro matrix about chiron in retrograde which started on July 15th and if you can find your birth chart I use Astro Matrix and I put it you have to have your birth day your birth time 
and your place of birth in order to get an accurate birth chart. And then you have you can you you can either look at the side reel or side reel or however you say that, or you can look at the tropical. And I suggest looking at both just to see what it says because the side reel mine is almost 100% Scorpio. I mean I've never seen so much Scorpio on one chart before, but it's Sagittarius in the tropical or Vedic I think it's called. Anyway, look at both. And then look to see where Chiron is, what house it's in, and it'll give you an understanding of what healing needs to take place. The deep wounding, that's like the wounded healer. It's an aspect of ourselves that we may have struggled with a long, long time. And it'll help us to overcome that, that particular situation that we're here to overcome in this life. So, we have these illusions about a transformation, and then we need to see we're not using our intuition to overcome. We all have intuition, we all have spiritual gifts, and Spirit is suggesting self-discipline, disciplining ourselves in our prayer life. Um, disciplining ourselves to be grounded, to know that we are to to do to do what we to oh, spirit help me to be determined to have courage to be determined to live to our full potential and let our actions speak louder than our words because a lot of times especially with spirituality people will talk a good talk but they cannot walk the walk and so spirit is saying be disciplined and live what you what you're saying what you're what you're suggesting that you believe live it don't just talk about it don't just talk the talk you got to walk the walk all right and then on the bottom of the deck is judgment judgment okay this is justice but it's basically saying the same thing there's something we're not using our intuition about there's a, there's a justice something that needs to be made right that we're not using our intuition about. So that might even go a little deeper. And what we don't see coming is that we're not using good judgment still about this. So it's a, it's a big struggle for many of us to work through our shadow selves. And that's what this whole lifetime is really about, is connecting with the Holy Spirit, waking up to our need for a spiritual practice of some sort, a spiritual connection with ourselves, with the universe, with the creator of all that is, with the Holy Spirit, and with each other. We wake up to that need for that connection, and Spirit is suggesting that some of us may need to be a little more disciplined and acknowledge our intuition more, like maybe you have a very strong intuition, and you're just not, you're not putting enough emphasis on the importance of it or something like that all right spirit how are you working in our home lives in our spiritual gifts in our psychic abilities what psychic ability is most prominent in our lives <clears throat> eagle and epiphany so there's something in our lives that we're we need to we're gonna we're gonna have an epiphany a realization an aha moment if you will about the bigger picture seeing something from a bigger picture not not being so narrow-minded and so small-minded that's the main way that spirit's working right now in our psychic abilities and in our spiritual gifts is the holy spirit is illuminating our minds to the bigger picture don't play it small. Be willing to take a risk. There's a risk here that needs to be taken. And I get a sense over here with the moon and the death card together and not using our intuition. This is this is what the sense I get is. Is this fear that comes with breaking out of traditional religious practices. The fear, if we can ever overcome and transcend that fear, even the Holy Scriptures say, Perfect love cast out all fear. So if we have fear, we have not allowed love to be perfected. We have not allowed love to do its perfect work in our lives if we still have fear 
especially surrounding our spirituality because the Holy Spirit does not come to bring fear to our hearts, okay? The Holy Spirit comes to give us comfort, to show us an amazing love like none we've ever had before, okay? All right, so how else might this Spirit be working? How else are you working, Holy Spirit? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I got Mira and hands. Mira and hands. And Mira is a reflection. It's a way of seeing ourselves correctly when we look in a mirror. And somehow there's a mirror, and Spirit wants to give us a, something practical. Spirit wants us to see ourselves and how important this practical work that we do, painting, drawing, construction, you know, everything that we do that we're gifted in, whatever that might be, our hands are gifted. Our hands are gifted to do something. Whether you work at, you know, somewhere as a receptionist or you work in management, whether you are a janitor and you clean the toilets, or whether you are the CEO who runs the whole company. It doesn't matter what you do. These are spiritual gifts that we've been given. And Spirit is encouraging us to take a good look to see how we can become more disciplined in these gifts that we've been given in our hands. Because maybe some of us haven't gone back to work where a lot of us may have lost our jobs. A lot of us might still not have gone back to work. And Spirit is encouraging us to get back to work. All right. I have 12, 13, 15, and 23. So four, three, four, six, three, four, six, five. Three, four, five, six, y'all, but they're just out of sequence. How amazing is that? Uh, there's a progression here where we have one step out of sequence. And it's these hands. No, it's this bird's eye view. We have to see the bigger picture. We're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing the bigger picture, y'all. We're not seeing the importance of working with our hands and how this just simply doing this will change our reflection it'll change how we feel about ourselves it'll give us that boost of self-esteem of knowing that we're doing something to help to be useful so some of us really need to get in, get out and start looking for work it's encouraging many of us to find a job, to find what we're gifted at, to do what we're good at. Anything else, Spirit? Anything else? Somebody might be a plumber. <clears throat> I know I lost an earring, my favorite dragonfly earring in the shower the other day. It went down the drain and I would love, oh, I got a baby here. There's a baby. So somehow there's a baby and then there's coins, money, blessings of financial gain on the bottom of the deck. So we need to see the bigger picture and have a realization of which careers will help us to see our reflection more, more clearly. To become the person that we truly are. Because, you know, you can put out, a pers you can put out an image to the world. Of who you are but when you look in that mirror you're gonna see the real you right you cannot hide from this mirror you can take them all out of your house but eventually when you look in a mirror and sometimes we have to be the mirror for others to see themselves and until we are in our actual place that we're supposed to be in doing what we're supposed to be doing we might not like, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, 
with your hands for your job, for your career, and you're part of this bigger picture, then you can become a mirror for somebody else who is afraid. Because once you work through these fears, the fears that you have, and you have this perfect love, and you're doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing in this lifetime, you can reflect. You, in other words, like, once you have gotten this healing and this perfect love is working and operating through you in these gifts, in these gifted areas of life, then when people look at you and they re it reflects back to them the places in their life that might need this healing. See what I'm saying? I hope that made sense. And then somehow it's going to resonate differently for everybody. But somebody, somebody has a literal baby. Somebody might have a literal baby. But Spirit is indicating over and over again about this baby. And it could be that Spirit is saying, it's time to step up and take care of these children. You have children to take care of. Be an example for your children. Get, a, get out find what it is you're supposed to be doing so that you can reflect to your children this healing and this wholeness and there won't be any illusions about this transformation. And then we have financial blessings which also come from that. So some of us need to really realize our need to see this differently. Okay, that's what I'm seeing here. Spirit, what do we need to surrender to make this happen? What do we need to surrender to make this happen? Effortlessness and complete healing. <laughs> Stop pushing so hard. The art of living means going with the flow instead of trying to force the river. And open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. And I will tell you that I didn't understand this effortlessness. And, I mean, even if you watch my videos, you might remember that I was like, I haven't, I haven't experienced that yet. And I'm starting to experience it now. And it's because I've really and truly detached from the results. You know, whatever it's going to be, is going to be. And I have learned through my own experience that I can accomplish more by simply sitting down somewhere and meditating and trying to connect with spirit and with my higher self and with the universe. I can accomplish more through meditation in 15, 30 minutes, two hours, whatever I decide is, is good for me at that moment. I can accomplish more by that than I can running around and doing a million other things to try and accomplish that same goal because once I can get still and quiet this acknowledgement of spirit takes place and then this discipline is happening this happens then I'm using my intuition for situations that need to be made right Whatever that situation is. It doesn't have to be a legal situation or a karmic situation. It could just be anything that needs to be made right. It could be me not having a job. It could be me not knowing what to eat for dinner tonight. It could be anything that needs to be made right. Anything that's not right that needs to be repaired. That, that I'm not clear on. Anything that I can't see clearly. I can find the answers faster and easier through effortlessness than I can through busyness. And then if I surrender to this complete healing, all of this is going to become effortless, isn't it? Alright, I hope this is making sense to somebody. What else do we need to surrender Holy Spirit to make this happen? The wisdom of our bodies. We need to start listening to our bodies and what this body is saying to us. And I will tell you that I can tell when I have a blockage somewhere by the different symptoms that I have. And we all know about that psychic gut. We know when something is making us energized or feeling uncomfortable with something. To listen to that. And we also know that when we don't listen to that, it usually gets us in trouble. <laughs> All right, Spirit, anything else? <clears throat> Don't be defensive and step into your full power. 
Defensiveness is the sign of weakness. If you want to communicate more in a more empowered way, stay centered and hear other people out. Then offer a non-defensive response. So when you hear something and you you feel like what's being said is not right, don't don't respond and be defensive. Just simply listen. And then you can respond in a non-defensive, non-threatening way. Spirit is saying, step into your own power, your full power. Life is calling you to step into your full power and stop playing it small, which is this eagle card. See the bigger picture. Stop hiding behind this fear-based ideology that makes you comfortable. God never said you were going to be comfortable on this journey. In fact, it would be the exact opposite, wouldn't it? If you go by Holy Scriptures. Alright, and then don't compare yourself to other people. Because when we step into this full power, we're going to be unique and different. Because Spirit has something unique and different that He it has put into each of our lives. All right, Spirit, can we talk about what's going on here? Just to just to clarify the message that I've just shared with you, that I'm on the right track and that I'm not out there in left field somewhere. Can you give us a card on the moon? This moon card has the feeling of needing to do shadow work, being afraid, and fighting the changes that the Holy Spirit is trying to make in our lives. <clears throat> This is a, a wish come true card. The moon is clarified by a secret wish coming true. What is this? This is a lot of emotion. Oh, baby, it has to do with this person right here that's upside down. There's somebody in your life, very powerful connection, because there's kings and queens. But when you have an emperor... This emperor is all of the kings combined. It's a masculine energy. And this person is a wish come true. Maybe this is your wishes coming true. Maybe you're this masculine energy. And you secretly want your wishes to come true. Clarify what these wishes are, spirit. Maybe you had lost hope in the situation for this person. And Spirit is showing you that it is possible for this person to have this complete healing. Oh, baby. Look. Look who's here already out the gate. There she is. There's his empress. This is all the queens combined. This person is a, a great mother. It could be somebody pregnant. A good mother. Nurturing, loving, but has good boundaries. Good with money. This is that Proverbs 31 check right here. And right now, this man that you have all these hopes for, you have a lot of hopes for this relationship to work out. But for some reason, he's not here. There's maybe not, a, maybe there's just this need for this transformation. And you're starting to see that this person is capable of complete healing because you had lost faith that that was ever going to happen. What are you saying, Spirit? Why is this person in the reverse? Why are they in the reverse? Because of work. Because of some work. It could be this shadow work. It could be just simply working on the relationship. Or it could be literally work. And there's definitely a component here that could be same sex. See how there's two men there? Or it could be um, father and son. Take it as it resonates. This could be your mom and dad, and your dad could be missing in action. And it has something to do with work. Maybe your dad lost their job, or maybe this is your old man, or maybe this is you. Take it as it resonates always. Use your own intuition about this situation. All right, Spirit. Clarify this work that needs to happen. All right, so there's somebody who's refusing 
a cup. See how there's somebody trying to hand her that cup of champagne? And she's just looking off in the distance. Everybody else is having fun, but this person's not happy. They do not want to have fun. They do not want to feel this love. Right here would indicate there's a need to work on this, but somebody's being stubborn and just does not want to hear it. Maybe they're not capable of hearing it. They need to go through this transformation. All right, so what else, Spirit? Why is justice on the bottom of the deck? This emperor is out of the picture right now. This person is not here in your life now because they are out of balance. To me, this is about give and take, equal, equal give and take. When it's in reverse, there's something unequal. There's some out, there's a balance that's out. This could literally be a mental health imbalance. This could be a chemical imbalance. It could be just because this person's not working. <laughs> Somebody is not healed in Somebody's not healed, and so they have this fear of intimacy, not wanting to take this love. And this is putting this out of balance. Why is the high priestess in reverse? Okay. We have the devil, which is Capricorn. We have Aries. We have definitely have strong Capricorn here. We also have Cancer, and we have Scorpio, we have Libra, and now we have Leo again. Alright, so there's a very, like, this is, right now you have too much devil energy and not enough happiness. We need to get this like this, like we had yesterday. And the way to do that is through this discipline this discipline and allowing spirit to heal you completely to do this shadow work because if you have issues of intimacy and trust issues or you have chemical dependencies or this devil energy can represent so many things it can just be major negativity like somebody is just always negative it could be somebody with mental illness. It could be somebody with chemical dependency. It could be somebody with sex addiction. It could be somebody who has trust issues, who has intimacy issues. It could be somebody who... Anything that you would relate to devil energy, okay? Spirit is saying you need to take a break from that and move move up, move beyond it. You have to move beyond this devil energy that's taking away your happiness. You have to address it first. You have to name it. You have to give it a name. You have to know what it is and give it a name. And then you have to find the area in your energy centers, in your chakras, that needs that healing. And once you apply your spiritual practice, your meditation to those centers, the Holy Spirit, use crystals. You can also use crystals. Crystals will help um, a lot. And I suggest studying on these things and finding alternative ways because the Western world, the only hope we have for mental illness, addictions, and that sort of thing is therapy, which works well, and medication. But if we can add to that this other component of meditation and clearing these energy centers, we, we can sometimes do away with the need for medication. And if we can't, it becomes more balanced. It becomes more, um, it helps it to be more successful. And that's that yin and yang. That's that light and darkness. I mean, you have to have a perfect balance of light and darkness. And right now, Spirit is saying there's way too much darkness, fear, doubt, shame, guilt, 
whatever this represents, all of those negative emotions that we can have, there's more negative than positive. And you have to figure out, this is that yin and yang, how to get that reversed. You have to figure out how to get that reversed and how to get this devil on its head because it's affecting our happiness. And Spirit's saying, it's time to take a break. It's time to put something to rest. Whatever this devil is, it's time to, to stop and put it to rest. Maybe take a literal vacation from your life to realign yourself with your purpose, with your highest and greatest good. And move forward. We're going to move you forward real fast. There's going to be some fast forward motion away from this negative towards something more fulfilling. <clears throat> And for some of you, it could include a literal baby. There could be a literal baby. Or this could be a project that Spirit's going to have you babying. You know, have you ever had a project you were working on and you were like, this is my baby? <laughs> and you felt like it was a baby? Like you got up first thing in the morning and you worked on that baby? And you worked on that baby till you went to bed? It could be a literal baby or it could be a metaphorical baby. My my palm is itching, y'all. And when I have a itchy palm, it's usually a sign of either a gold digger or a very big blessing to come. And this would indicate coins on the bottom of this deck. All right. So, maybe there's some denial that needs to be worked through. What do we need to surrender, Spirit, to get past this devil? I know we not got to surrender them addictions. What else do we need to surrender, Spirit, to get rid of this devil? You just have to pray. Whatever it is that you need to get rid of, Spirit's saying, I just want you to start praying. Talk to me. Prayer is talking to Spirit. Meditation is listening for Spirit's response to your prayers. So if all you ever do is meditate, then you're never saying anything. And if all you ever do is pray, then you're never listening. It's like having a one-sided conversation. That puts things out of balance. What else, Spirit, do we need to surrender to get rid of this devil energy and into this sun, this happiness? Resentments. we got to let go of resentments we might be having. People that we need to forgive. I'm hearing Marsha, Marsha, or Marshall. And I'm hearing that name Donovan again. All right, anything else, Spirit? Unhealthy relationships. Work on these relationships with these toxic, unavailable people. You deserve to be treasured and surrounded by positive people. Somebody might be having a dream that they're in water, fully dressed, immersed in water. I'm hearing Stephanie. What else do we need to surrender, Holy Spirit? There it is. There it is right there. Our addictions. Got to get rid of those addictions. Anything that's addictive. And then just understand and surrender to the magic of who you are. You're a magical being. You were never made for ordinary. You were always made for something better, something more, something extra. You're extra. Accept that. And step into your full power. All right, Spirit. So talk to me, baby, about what comes next. Uh, why is justice in the high priestess over here on the bottom of the deck? Why is justice here? Spirit said that's what's out of bounds. Why is the high priestess in reverse? Why is the high priestess in reverse? Because of this two of cups. Divine partnership. Or a partnership of some sort. Your partnership was way over here. Why is there a partnership over there in that crate? Your partners might be in a crate. <laughs> Why is the partnership in a crate? Oh, look. For some of you, this person is incarcerated, okay? You don't love yourself. There could be also a little girl involved here. You haven't had any, you haven't loved yourself. 
but you've been planning on it. You know you haven't been loving yourself. And maybe to me this is like you don't you don't trust this love. You don't trust this love at all. Like you have serious serious trust issues. You you're convinced that this isn't going to work out. You are planning on this failing. You're planning on this failing and you're planning on you you're in fight or flight right now. You either want to fight about this or you just want to go curl up somewhere and hide because you are planning on this not working out and the anxiety you're having is incredible the anxiety you're having has you this mirror when you look in this mirror there's another card let me show you what the eight of swords looks like in another deck it can be a card of imprisonment but it can be like this is the actual literal prison the five of pentacles because the pentacles are the earth realm. This sword energy is is like mind fuckery. Excuse my language. Here, help me find this card. Thank you so very much. This is the eight of swords. She, see how she's looking in the mirror and she's tied up and her thoughts are all crazy and everything. But in reality, she's really not any of those things. It's just how she perceives herself in this mirror. It's your, it's your own anxiety and thoughts around the circumstance or situation that is sabotaging it because you're not seeing yourself correctly you're not seeing yourself correctly your your fears you're fear driven you're being driven by fear instead of love and that is going to always lead you to a broken heart because you will you, you will shoot your own self in the foot and something has happened to you in the past that has caused you to have these anxieties. It's probably because it's happened to you with this particular relationship. And you're like, I already know how this ends. Why am I even bothering? Okay. I have a card turned over here. The tower in reverse was turned over in there. The tower in reverse was turned over in the deck, y'all. Why is the tower here? Because you're convinced that this is going down. Yeah, you're having, look, you're probably having nightmares at night. You might have PTSD. For real, for real. And that would probably indicate need for therapy but you are convinced that this is going to end in a nightmare and guess what your thoughts become things and if you're convinced that this is going to be a nightmare it's going to be a nightmare because you're a prisoner of your own mind right now you're a prisoner in your own memories your own mind has you captive all right spirit can we get some guidance for whoever is going through this? Guidance, Spirit, for whoever's going through this. Can I please get a message from Moonology that will help me to give guidance? This is a hard thing to go through. I mean, just saying, it is. It's hard. Spirit, what message do you have for this individual from Moonology? Thank you. Spirit... You're amazing, Spirit. You are freaking amazing. Oh, my God, Spirit. Spirit says work through your fears. New Moon and Scorpio, work through your fears. You and your loved ones are safe. New Moon and Cancer. Whoever you're afraid of in your life, whether it be you and your family members, you and your job, whoever it is, you're, you and your loved ones are safe. You, you're, These fears are not rational fears, Spirit's saying. Bring love into the situation. Get rid of the fear because perfect love casts out all fear. And if that's not the case, if you're afraid and you don't have this perfect love, which none of us typically are born with it, we have to find it. The way to find it is through disciplining yourself to prayer and meditation. Listening to your body. 
not worrying, not having, oh, there's so much to do. And I know that can be overwhelming. But Spirit is saying, be bold. Be bold and make the first move. If you'll take one step, I'll take ten and meet you right where you are. But you have to make that first move and let me know that you're serious about working on this. That's your, that's your thing that has to happen. I'll do mine if you do yours. All right, Spirit, what messages might you give us out of these? Because I'm going through this too. We are all going through this. None of us are perfect and have this all worked out or all figured out. Girl, what message do we need here? Oh, baby, that's a lot. I'm not surprised, though. All right, Spirit says, What am I looking for outside of myself that is already within me? Am I talking about what I need? Am I communicating my needs? So, maybe you're looking for validation outside of yourself. Maybe you're looking for somebody else to tell you what's going to happen next. When the answer is really within and you'll find it through this meditation. Are you telling other people what you need? Do you realize that your needs are valid and that you should tell people what you need and not be quiet about your needs? Where am I called to use my voice right now? What passion am I ready to pursue? And what do I resist feeling right now? <laughs> I mean, this couldn't be any more perfect if I chose it myself. What are you looking for outside of yourself that's already within you? Maybe you're looking for this healing in a million different places and you're not finding it. Spirit's saying that's because it's already within you. Breathe in your favorite essential oil. Inhale deeply into your belly. Drop your shoulders and spend some time hanging out with your soul today. Ask for what you need and be ready for the answers. Are you praying? Are you communicating your needs? Maybe you're just not communicating what you need to Spirit. And Spirit's saying, I'm asking you to talk to me. I'm here with you right now. I'm with you. I'm in you. I'm within you. I'm already here. Why are you looking for me outside of yourself? The Holy Spirit was, is within us. We need to speak clearly to the Holy Spirit about what we need. Okay? And don't feel guilty for asking for this need, for this healing. And... That's where we're being called to use our voice, is within our own selves, within the universe, within our relationship with spirit. What passion are you ready to pursue? And why are you avoiding this pain? What, this fear, this trust issue, what is it that you're resisting to feel? Fear is like, <laughs> if you can't feel it, we can't heal it. Allow yourself to feel this wave. Let it move through you no matter how long it lasts and then release it back into the ocean. Feel it, heal it, enjoy the sweet freedom within your soul. We have to feel it to heal it. In order to let go of pain, we first have to honor its existence. Emotions are like waves. Some are soft, some are fierce, some are layered, and some will sweep you off your feet. When we allow ourselves to feel it all, we can then release what no longer serves us. Allow yourself to feel the wave. Let it move through you. Then release it back into the ocean. Feel it. Heal it. Enjoy the sweet freedom within your soul. Spirit wants to heal us completely. And then, on the bottom of the deck, what risk can I take today? Because some of us have so many issues with trust and abandonment. And fear that we ain't trying to take no risk, honey. <laughs> We're trying to really, really not take a risk. Be not mistaken, you're gonna have to take bigger risks than you ever thought possible on this path towards your dreams. You're gonna have to take the big scary leap, but do not fret because your soul has wings. Today's soul action. What risk can you take to move towards your dreams? Make a decision and do it. No more thinking, only doing. Be brave and courageous and you will discover what you are really made of. 
All right, again. Can I please get a message from the house of the night? Can I please get a message from the house of the night? Thank you, Spirit. The High Priestess of Water and Fragment. There's a lot of emotion going on right now. And some of us feel like our lives make no sense the way that they are broken up. Like, we're trying to live... Basically, <laughs> I think we're trying to hide who we truly are because of fear that other people will not accept the true us. And so we're hiding and our life feels very fragmented. Like, I have to be this way when I'm around this group. I have to be this way when I'm at work. I have to act this way around my parents. And Spirit is saying, meditate about that. Meditate about it. And let me tell you how to be so you can be consistently showing up to your life and not afraid to be yourself for fear that you'll be rejected. Okay, meditate. Meditation number 25. Let's see what it says right out of the book. Be still and listen to the sounds of the pulsing energy as the life force inherent in all things sings a gentle song to your sweet ears. In the darkness, inky black right now, I, Nix, make my magic and weave it into the world. This is the time for non-action. Do nothing and find quiet within your heart and wait. All will be revealed when the time is right. Now is the time for quiet contemplation. You won't miss anything if you stay quiet. Be still and know that I, Nyx, goddess of night, am always with you as you discover your magic in silence. And... If you're of the Christian religion, then you might be familiar with Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Thank God for Miss Pat who taught me how to meditate many years ago. Alright, thank you for the Holy Spirit for this beautiful, beautiful, wow, spirit. Oh, somebody might be cooking. I have a spatula. Maybe you're frying some eggs or making some pancakes. I have a bicycle. I have the Mother Mary and the Baby Jesus and St. Christopher. I have those guardian angels watching over the children on the bridge, the broken bridge. That song, God Made the Broken Road, that led me straight to you. I have the Eiffel Tower. I have a tree of life. I'm, I keep hearing Donovan or Jonathan. I have a nail. Maybe you're a carpenter or maybe you love a carpenter. I have an anchor and a ship's captain wheel. I have a peace sign. I have a teeny tiny little tree. It looks like it could be like a tree of life from the Garden of Eden. I have a fairy holding a heart. I have a heart with wings and a lock in the center. Strong is beautiful. I have a heart that's in Spanish, I think. Maybe you speak Spanish. I have a handcuff. I have an owl. I have a heart that says love. I have two hearts connected. I have Holly Hobby. Maybe your name is Holly. I have an elephant. I have a whale tail or a mermaid tail. I have an Eiffel Tower, I have a wing, I have a hand holding a heart that says love. Somebody's got your heart in their hand, or maybe you do. I have a star that looks like a starfish. I have a shell, maybe your name is Shell. I have love and peace. I have yin and yang. I have a fish, maybe you're a Christian. I have a bat with a ball. I have a captain's wheel. I have me versus me. I have a wave. I have a heart with a peace sign. I have a tree of life. I have a, a feather. I have an angel. 
I have an elephant. I have a horse. I have Jesus on the cross. I have another little angel. I have a butterfly. And I have a flower. Since it's going to be the I have the love between a grandmother and granddaughter is forever. I have a very beautiful angel. I have a feather. Maybe you're finding feathers. I have an arrow for Sagittarius and for infinity. I have a fairy and a crescent moon. I have the epiphany, the light bulb, aha, having an aha moment. And every fair from fair sometimes declines William Shakespeare. I have that metal head gear. I have give a girl the right shoes and she can conquer the world, Marilyn Monroe. And maybe your name is Marilyn. Or maybe you just love, maybe your name is Emma Jean. I have an arrow. I have a fancy heart. I have a Star of David. Maybe you're Jewish or maybe your name is David. Hi, David. I have a cash sign. I have an anchor again. Somebody is definitely into boats and stuff because here's a sailboat. And I always say, get out of the rowboat and get in the sailboat and let spirit take you where spirit wants you to be. Because <clears throat> if not, you're going to get drugged there. <laughs> and then I have this cute little bullet. I don't know why. Maybe you're into guns heavily. Okie dokie. Spirit, what rocks would go perfect with this reading? What rocks would go perfect with this reading? Here? I have passion, family, joy. Courage, kindness, hope, and trust. Hope and trust. Maybe your name is Hope. Maybe your name is Joy. All right, you guys. That's the reading for today. I hope that it helped in some way. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. Like the video if you enjoyed it or it resonated with you. And I love you guys. I'll be back later today. I think I'm going to go through the elements, the air, fire, earth, and water. Be blessed, okay? Bye.